Hey there, Kaleidoscope Clan. How's everyone doing? This is Megos Ma'at. And today, I want to discuss with you spiritual predators and how to avoid them. Let's get into it. Kaleidoscope clan, how's everyone doing? It's Mary Post and Ma'at. Um, just wanted to come on today and say a few words about spiritual predators. Yes, it's very important. Um, there are a lot of people who are in denial about whether the spiritual world really exists. I don't know what to tell you. We really are spiritual beings, so... It should actually be the framework that we're functioning out of. And so we've all dealt with spiritual predators, regardless of what type of religion or spirituality that you identify with. Because being a spiritual predator is more how someone interacts with you. Um, and we've all dealt with spiritual predators on a high level, right? Um, for example, like what they do with a lot of these public rituals, you know, like regardless of whether you understand how rituals work, um, they understand very well, they study. And so they are siphoning your energy without you understanding and using it in ways that you don't know. Right. So spiritual predators, um, it's really important to talk about it because there's a big spiritual awakening and people are looking for different mentors, right? Teachers, spiritual teachers. And um, it is one of the most dangerous um, situations that is possible, right? When someone is captured spiritually by another person and um, trust them on a deep level gives them, you know, access to their deepest vulnerabilities. Um, and then also just spiritual science. If you don't understand it, someone could be teaching it to you, but, but teaching you in a way where it's making you vulnerable to, you know, things that they could do to you. You know, and I'm speaking from experience, okay? I got into spirituality when I was in college, and I was just like, I wasn't afraid. I was just like, really, I mean, as far as like, because I got into like traditional African culture, traditional culture, period. Like, I was studying everything I could about traditional culture. But then as far as the practicing of traditional culture, like if you don't understand that a culture doesn't make someone good or bad, it is about what a person aligns themselves um, with. Most of the indigenous ones, they're just like very different um, styles of the same thing, right? Um, so... Yeah, but when I was younger, I used to think, for instance, that, like, all spirituals were good. Like, people who were not into religion, but people who were into spirituality. I, I mean, I knew about the stories of hexes and different things. I just thought that I was above it. <coughs> because I was such a good person. <clears throat> I thought that I could be even around evil and not freak out like you know be around it be around people who are evil and it wouldn't touch me is what I was thinking I was wrong okay it's really dangerous um and the thing is that I didn't think I was around evil people, but I questioned certain actions and different things like that that you know were like red flags that I didn't take to heart and I really want to encourage people to take things to heart recently I was talking to a friend of mine 
and she has a friend who says that he has a demon on him you know and she's like oh yeah and she said that whenever she talks she's like oh you know are you okay is that you know is he still on you and he'll be like don't talk about that you know and like act weird and then he gave her something that she took to her house and i'm like I know that you might not take it seriously, but if someone says that they have a demon on them, believe them and don't interact with them because there are ways to transfer demons. Even if the person's not conscious of it, the demon might just want to hop. You know what I'm saying? People need to understand and you know there's the same old story of like the spiritualist healer like just like a pastor but they're really like have secret covert relationships with people in different ways where they're siphoning the relation um the energy and they're in like um like they have different masks that they wear but like publicly, like a lot of people trust them and stuff like that. Like those are very common in the spiritual community. People who are having sex with everybody or people who are into demonic things because they know about how to capture your energy. Now, I'm going to say this, you know, I lived in Ghana for 10 years. And I was so naive. I was around so many things that now when I look at it, it's like, oh my God. But yeah, like they had, they could capture people's spirit in bottles. There were priests where that's what they did. And I know someone who went to go study under them. Uh, yeah. So there are people who can do that. If, you know, if you give them the right information about you, like maybe you're your birth information is one thing that you shouldn't give to just anybody um your full birth name like your names you know um touch is really you know something you have to be careful you know you can't just hug everybody the more you get into spiritual stuff you understand that and the more people target you because you're in spiritual stuff like when people understand that you're into spirituality then they also get weird like they feel challenged to see how powerful you are or something i guess but um yeah i i would say most of the shaman that i've worked with most of the leaders ended up being corrupt including my ex-husband um but yeah and really corrupt like him and there was another shaman where um we're talking about demons that make that uh, well okay we're talking about incubus succubus demons jezebel demons that capture people like they're very charismatic so if you feel really drawn to somebody just kind of take a step back see what's going on i mean of course you know if they're amazing they're amazing but some people do glamour magic just like in the cartoons you know they're really the the thing like mirror mirror on the wall that that exists or people can look into the mirror and as a portal and see you monitoring spirits so i'm not saying this to like scare anyone or to you know make people afraid i'm saying this to make people conscious i would say to especially watch out for men leaders women too but um as far as capturing you know just the traditional egotistical leader who gets a lot of attention from a lot of people and a lot of people want to sex with them um, but women too if that's the case because these demons are all around i know for me too when i was in college i had a friend who definitely had a serious 
succubus energy on her and I didn't recognize how dangerous it was I didn't do any of the things with her but I knew that she did certain things and even not that long ago I knew someone who also it's like people are like really into like swapping out a whole lot of sexual energies with a lot of people there's a very good chance that there's a demon on them um and oh and as people get into spiritual stuff they get into things like blood sacrifices they get into things like doing sex magic they can do things like astro travel and come to you while you're sleeping they can hypnotize you they can you know use words of power they can you know uh, poison you with plant medicines if you take it with them or you know affect your consciousness with plant medicines um, I mean the list goes on and on but um, like literally if you don't understand what's happening they can connect like a cord to you where they're just siphoning your energy constantly and you're feeding their success while you're getting weaker and weaker. And that's a real thing. I know it's, it sounds, excuse me, I see something white in my hair. It sounds really, you know, like a movie, but life really is like a movie, isn't it? I mean, look at what just happened with Trump. I mean, he was an actor. Yeah, our world is a movie. You know, media runs our world and they're fake as hell. So anyway, moving on. Um, so the point is, don't just jump up to follow somebody, okay? I've given someone that advice before about a particular person that I knew was a predator. If you ever hear any stories about somebody, take a pause. You know what I'm saying? So I told this person watch out for that person like i've never put that person on a bus because spiritualists are dangerous you don't go out you know um trying to create more chaos and destruction you want to try to protect who you can in the ways that you can but it's not about being as loud as possible or you know you have to be very circumspect about how you address stuff it's not black and white as they say right so, I told this woman about how this person had violated different people in different ways. And she thanked me for, for my advice and went and followed him. And then tried to put him on blast tried to like like she's young and he's like at least 15 years older than her and a real shaman a real magician she was trying to rally people around to have like a trial about him or something I was like yo are you out of your mind like you like not a good look like I told her not to do it she did it and then she did that and was trying to pull other people I was like yo you're tripping no you have to be when it comes to spirituality okay take your time one of the most important things is who you're following because uh, the wrong person can put your life in danger and I'm not exaggerating I have real stories of repercussions I've had from simply trusting the wrong people and really being excited to you know follow them down a road of hell okay but I didn't know and I did learn a lot of good things along the way but you know the devil's in the details always mixes in with truth you know it's it's not a thing it's how you do a thing it's not whether you do a thing it's how you do a thing right there are devilish ways that you can 
you know, say that you're helping people or different things. So, yeah, I would just beware. Um, I'm trying to think of, okay, if you catch anyone in a lie, if you see any kind of compromising behavior related to um, flirtation, a spiritual leader should not be flirting with the congregation. That should not, because it does serve as a distraction from the powerful non-sexual energies that are so important for a community to enjoy. When sexuality comes into a community, is pushed around, it will completely destroy the community. And I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen in groups. I've seen it happen in communities. Um, very, very dangerous dynamic, you know. And let me just say that, you know, even if you don't feel like it's hurting you, if you know that you're supporting someone who's hurting other people, you're going to get that karma. Anything you do spiritually, you're going to get the karma. Like, um, the best thing to do is to know how to tap in spiritually to your spirit guides, your ancestors, and to your heart. That's your best protection is heart energy love energy which is tapping into God right so if you're considering a teacher a spiritual mentor take time to watch them take time to make sure that they live what they preach take time to make sure that you're a good match that you have the same values it's worth taking time and if you don't agree with them, respectfully walk away. Really important. Don't lollygag in the wrong environment spiritually. Okay, so yes. If you're going through a spiritual awakening, God bless you. Dark Night of the Soul is really challenging. I'm going through another one. I'm... I'm used to this now, <laughs> but it's a challenge. I, like I have to breathe through it. I have to like, there are all kinds of ways you have to ground down and take care of yourself. Okay. But the most important thing is to have a clear channel to understand what you're thinking, understand how you're feeling. Don't let another person who's supposed to be a spiritualist project onto you and have you believing in things or participating in things that do not serve you okay you're here for a purpose don't let anyone take you off your purpose because there are entities that are sent through all kinds of people to take you off your purpose and things like sexual sabotage and entertainment you know are used to completely destroy people, especially sex. So, you know, um, take time, dear one, take time. All right, so yes, that is what I wanted to say about spiritual predators. I have had a lot of experience with them myself. Um, and I'm still alive, I'm here. I believe that spirit allowed me to still be here so that I can share my knowledge with others and help them to be safe and to overcome narcissistic abuse and spiritual abuse. So if you have any interest in having a person who provides a safe space for you and who is not doing spell work against anyone or um, have the intentions to manipulate or control you, 
you can um, write me at the email below. Um, again, God bless us all. It's a really challenging time. So, our only saving grace is our connection to God. So, may your connection to your higher self be fortified in the days ahead. This is Mediplus Ma'at encouraging you to continue to embody your sacred transformation. Until next time, peace.